Hi, my name's Hugh Della, and I'm a teacher and teacher trainer based in London. Uh, I'm also the co-author of two five-level series of general English books called Innovations and Outcomes, uh, published by National Geographic Learning, which uh, some of you maybe have heard of. Um, many others probably won't have done, but anyway. Um, and along with my co-author, I'm the co-founder of a, a new company, a new website called Lexical Lab. Um, I haven't been in Spain for Spain TESOL for the last two or three years, I think, so uh, I've kind of missed it, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to catching up with what everyone's talking about and with what's going on. Um, I've also never been to Salamanca, so obviously I'm looking forward to being in a, a new city and uh, hoping to have a nose around and see what goes on there. I'm doing two talks, both of them on the Saturday, and the first one is called Smooth Sailing Through the Sea of Words. Um, slight kind of death by metaphorical conceit in the title there, my apologies. In this talk, I'm basically exploring what we mean by a lexical set, um, what lexical sets are, how they work, uh, and how, at the moment, the way that they're often presented to us as teachers leads to, almost inevitably, the teaching of highly infrequent language, uh, less frequently used language. Uh, and I think this is problematic for reasons that I'll be going into. Uh, I also think there are other ways we could be framing the whole idea of lexical sets which would be more beneficial. And uh, I'll be talking more about that and and how that works and why I think that's the case. I'll then really move on to do a few kind of soft science experiments on people and get people to think a little bit about what is frequency? How do we know which words are frequent, which words aren't? And I'll be suggesting that most of us are quite bad at actually being aware of what's frequent and that there are reasons for this. One of which is an idea I've, I've kind of drawn from Daniel Kahneman, the guy who wrote Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. From his work, uh, he talks a lot about availability biases and I'll be exploring that idea with relation to English language teaching. Uh, I'll also be looking a little bit at how we can give better examples um, and really how we can train ourselves to be more aware of, of, of frequency and its relevance. The other talk I'm doing is called The Curse of Creativity, which uh, may sound a provocative title, I don't know. Uh, it's something that uh, I think seemed to, to, to be in keeping with the general theme of the conference this year and hopefully with some of what people will be talking about. And it's really based on the idea that the dominant way we think about creativity in the Western world and in Western English language teaching has caused lots of problems. Uh, I'll be looking a little bit at some examples of these problems in terms of language, teaching, teacher training. Um, and I'll, I'll be really con putting forward the idea that there are other ways of thinking about what it means to be creative. And that maybe in language teaching we'd be better off if we rooted our, our concepts of creativity in the formulaic, the mundane, the everyday, the predictable, the rule bound. Um, and that if you accept this it has real ramifications for learning, for teaching, for teacher training. It's a talk I'm quite proud of because I've managed to shoehorn a whole range of my own peculiar diverse and eclectic influences into it. So it includes, for example, um, everyone from Bruce Lee, the Hong Kong-born martial arts genius, to Charlie Mingus, the black American jazz bassist. Uh, if you're wondering how they might possibly be connected to each other, and uh, even more unlikely to the whole realm of English language teaching and to your own particular classroom. Come along and watch the talk and look forward to seeing some of you there and to talking to you. Okay, bye.